cannot be interfered with, that cannot be stopped, that lifeline is Jesus Christ. And we have come now to witness the power, the power of this lifeline. It cannot be ended. It cannot be interrupted. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for bringing us to know the great power of the great creator, Jesus Christ, we consecrate this meeting now into your hand. Come and hear us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, 
in every situation of, or circumstance, in everything you do, yes, there's a power that controls. In every situation you are, there's a power that is controlling. And that power is the power that created you. That power is the power that sustains you. That power is the power that overpowers every other power. That power is the power of Jesus Christ. When you are perplexed, don't worry. Don't shake. Don't despair. Because you have a living Savior in every situation, in every circumstance, in different times, yes, you will sometimes be tempted. If you are a true Christian, as the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 verse 12, all day that we live godly in Christ Jesus must suffer persecution. Friends, is persecution a punishment from God? No, not at all. It's a cleansing vessel that Jesus uses to prepare you for his kingdom to come, for the joy that will never end. So I'm calling you that whenever you are being tempted, and of course, temptation is not sin. It's yielding to temptation. That is the sin. But we have an enemy, a great enemy, the enemy of your God, the enemy of my God, the enemy of your life. As a matter of fact, he is a destroyer. And as the Bible calls him in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, says he is the accuser of brethren. Have you been accused for what you didn't do? How did you feel? He wants to destroy you. But when you are facing situations like this, when you are being hated, when you are being troubled, friends, there is a lifeline that you can call. 24 hours, but the thing is that it is free. Somebody has died and purchased this lifeline. That man is Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. He is the Creator, the Almighty, the Everlasting Father. He says in Psalms chapter 50, verse 15, say, Call upon me. When you are in trouble, I will give you rest. I will answer. I will be with you. Call upon me. He didn't say call in the morning. His line is never busy. He didn't say call in the afternoon. He didn't say call in the night. It is 24 hours privilege. Friends, how would you like to have such a privilege? Why then do we hang our faces down? Why then are you worried where you are sitting now? Do you know that worry, to worry is to dishonor God? You have a great father who had defeated that power that you fear according to Hebrews chapter 2. Verses 14 and 15. Are you not happy? Jesus' line is lifeline. He says in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Friend, he didn't say, I am a way. He didn't say, I am one of the truths. He says, I am the truth. 
I am the way. And he said, he that comes to me, no way will I cast away John chapter 6 verse 37. Friend, he's never wearied. Say John 6 37, no one that comes to me will I ever cast away. Will I ever cast away? Friends, the problems we have is this. When we are facing some turbulences of life, when the storm of life is hitting us, instead of reaching out to the lifeline Jesus Christ, we go to man. That's our failure. Man cannot help you. Are you going through some turbulence now? Psalm 108, verses 12 and 13 says, The help of man cannot be enough. Man cannot help you. And if David prayed, send us help, O Lord. Because with Jesus, with you, you will have the victory. Your victory is sure. What a loving God. Do you know you have a great privilege? I want you to rejoice now. I want you to be gladdened. Jesus loves you. And he has come. That you will have life. And that is what he says in John chapter 10. Verse 10, and that you have it more abundantly. As a matter of fact, not only life here on earth, friends, but life everlasting. Do you know him? He says in John chapter 17, verse 3, say, this is life eternal. To know Jesus Christ and to know God who sends him, this is life eternal. Now, why are we here? Why are you here? You are not here by chance. God loves you so much that he thought of you. Remember the word, the beginning. Jesus is the beginning, as he says in Revelation chapter 22, Verses 12 and 13, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. God thought of you, precisely you. When he made the statement in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, let us, let us make man in our image, in our image. What a noble thought, friends. You see how important you are? You see the privilege you are? You see the opportunity that you have? You see the uplifted height that God thought of you when he created you? In the image of God. What has happened? What has happened? We lost that image. Through sin and rebellion. Cursed by the arch enemy. Satan the deceiver. Satan the destroyer. Who is still worrying about. Worrying you today. Trying to distract you. From the source of life, Jesus, the lifeline. I've come to tell you, don't give him any chance, friends. Don't give him any chance. He is a monster. But Jesus is the loving God. Nothing changed. The Bible says in John 3.16 that God so loved the world 
that he gave us his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you know what it means? Let's assume you have only one son who is dear to your heart. Who is dear, very dear to your heart. Can you afford to let him die in redemption of wicked people like you and I? But the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 that while we were yet sinners, Jesus came and died for you. Jesus came and died for me. Jesus came and died for the world. And God, according to John chapter 10 verse 17, loved Jesus so specially for agreeing to die for you and for me. Is this not a great comfort? My friends, I know as you are sitting there watching, while you are here standing, listening, whatever you are doing, I've come to bring you hope that there's a living lifeline that cannot be broken, that cannot be interrupted. Take your burden to him who cares for you. He said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, he says, if we humble ourselves before him, he will lift us up at the right time. At the right time. Say, cast your burdens upon him because he cares for you. When we rebelled through the deception of that enemy, you know, you remember how it started? When God created man, Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 7, he created a home, a garden, and placed in Eden. They had a covering of God. They had all the properties of God. They had all the advantages. They were communing with their creator day by day, moment by moment. But he placed a mark, a test. He says, you can eat of everything in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. The day you eat of it, ye shall surely die. Friends, have you lost any loved one? Have you seen a mortuary? Have you seen an ambulance? That was the beginning. Here comes the devil in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. In deceiving, devising words, he tempted our first mother, Eve. As she wandered away from the side of the husband, watching the tree that God said, stay away. Then the devil said, ye shall eat. Here, eat. That's why, friends, it is very dangerous for you to go away from the sacred hand of God to be watching into where you are not supposed to be. Heaven is your final home. Hell is not for you. He says, you shall not surely die. He's a liar. I have lost my mother. My father is dead. The devil said they will not die. Who told a lie? The devil is a liar. And he's still deceiving people today. I've come to call you out from this darkness, from the deception of this great enemy. 
He doesn't love you. He hates you, friends. All he wants to see is for you to shed the tears that you are shedding now. For you to be in that sorrow that you are going through now. For you to be in that agony that you are going through now. That's what made the devil happy. But friends, that agony you are going through, Jesus is in it with you. That sorrows you are going through, Jesus is in the same with you because he cares for you. He gave his life for you. Should we not come to him? Should we not take time and study his word? This is his message. This is the letter of Jesus Christ to heal all your burdens, to heal all those sorrows, to take away all those afflictions. This is it. That's why it says in Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Say, ye shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you rise up, when you are standing, when you are walking, then you will make your way to prosperous. Then you have good success. But what have we done? We have left our Bible on the shelf and dust has covered them. Friends, that is the problem we have. This, has, this is a lifeline to life. Jesus Christ if you want to have this life, friends, go to him. If you have to want to have this life, friends, search the word of God. You will never be disappointed. You will never be disappointed. You have hope. Why do we go to look for light in the darkness? Every suggestion of Satan, every suggestion of the world leads you to darkness. Don't listen to the whispering of the arch enemy. Don't listen to the feelings of self. Do not love this world. This world is a great destroyer. For John, chapter 2, verse 15 to 17 says, Love not the world, neither the things of the world, loss of the eye, loss of the flesh, and pride of life. They are not from the Father. They will all perish. And everything with them will perish, friends. And James chapter 4, verse 4 says, Ye adulterers and ye adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of this world is enmity with God. Whosoever is the friend of this world is the enemy of God. Friends, how bad can that be to be the enemy of God? Where is your hope? Where is your hope? Where is the lifeline? The devil claims that he's the owner of the world, but he has not. Jesus has died. I reclaim that authority and have given it to you and to I if you can accept it. Friends, Jesus is inviting us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Says, come, friends, come unto me, all ye that labor. And are heavily laden. And he says, I will give you rest. 
I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Listen to me. I care for you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Friends, these burdens of this world we are placing on ourselves is killing us. It's choking us. Lift them and give them over to Jesus Christ and leave them at the foot of the cross. What are you going through now? There is a solution. Friends, we have power in Jesus. His grace is sufficient for you. All the troubles you see in this world is caused by that great enemy. Don't let him deceive you. He cannot help you. Psalm 118 verse 6 says, What can man do unto me? I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Nothing. If you hold on to Jesus, you can never be disappointed. Why do you take your eyes from him? Keep your eyes fixed on him. You will never be disappointed. The joy of the Lord shall be your glory. Rejoice because there is hope. Rejoice, friends. Don't lose hope. It's going to be all right. The Lord is coming. Coming soon. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for being the lifeline that cannot be interrupted. Open our eyes and our minds to call upon you at all times. May this be our experience. Between Jesus' name we pray. Friends, if you want to know more about the lifeline that cannot be interrupted, Jesus Christ, you can reach us through the telephone numbers on the screen or through the YouTube or the website. Until then, may God bless you.